Okay. Okay, we're learning the dinim of etiquette of a meal. So we're discussing that if you own animals, you have to give the animals to eat before you give yourself. There are many posts in the right, but on Shabbos, because it's a mitzvah to eat, so then you can feed yourself before you feed the animals. Um, there's a lot of things, like you're not allowed to do things that would, uh, in, as they say in America, gross out people. Like you're not supposed to bite something into a piece of bread or whatever and then put it back on the table because it grosses people out. Um, you shouldn't uh, drink your, somebody else's leftovers because they might mind it, even though by tzaddikim it was always grabbing shirayim, so the post can discuss that, what it is. Okay, a person should not be what's called a kamden besudasi. A person should not give the impression of being a miser in his eating. In other words, if a guy has guests and he gives the impression to the guests that, you know, every piece of meat you're eating costs X amount of money, you know, it's pretty expensive to feed you, uh, then, then they're embarrassed to eat. So, so you make sure that when uh, you have guests, at least you should give a, be an open hand and not, not uh, because then the big guests don't, won't, won't want to eat because they'll think that you're going to be angry that you're eating the, that they're, eat, they're eating your food. Yeah, um, in fact, there's an interesting story, Rabbi Kiveger, that he we used to bring poor people to his meal to eat on Shabbos. So one poor person, uh, by mistake, uh, banged into a cup of wine that's pulled all over the table. And the guest was very embarrassed. This is Rabbi Kiveger was a great uh, tzaddik. And he was very embarrassed. So a minute later, Rabbi Kiveger, after they refilled the cups and everything, so Rabbi Kiveger, like, banged the table. And again, everything spilled. So he says, what's wrong with this table, you know? So that made the guest feel good that he, you know, it wasn't his fault, so to speak, it was the table's fault. But that's a person supposed to make sure the guests are comfortable. Okay, next is like this. You're not allowed to talk during eating. Even the potato. Why? Because it's the Sarkana, the Gemara says, because the Shemayakdim Kona elevation. Now you have two pipes. You have the food pipe and you have the wind pipe. Now, normally when you eat, the windpipe is closed and the food pipe is open, so the food goes down the right pipe. But if you're talking, so the windpipe gets open. And then when you're eating, while you're talking, uh, sometimes the food can go down the wrong pipe and you can choke and it's, uh, it's dangerous. So therefore the Gemara says in Shekhanar of Paskins that you're not allowed to talk during the meal. Even if you have food in your mouth, by the way, and somebody sneezes, that you always say, uh, in the Gemara they used to say Asusa, which is like, to gazon, bless you, whatever, you're not allowed to say it also during a meal while, while you have food in your mouth because it's dangerous to talk. But not during eating, like between courses or at the end, then it's a mitzvah, like it says in Pegiovis, any uh, table that doesn't have Torah on it is like they ate from Ziv Chimesim, the sacrifices of idols. Um, okay, some, uh, they say, uh, now, because, by the way, because... Halachically, you have to say a Dvar Torah. You know, it says in Pirkei Ava, Shleish Shishach Hoshulchan Echan, they didn't say a Dvar Torah. So the Bartonur over there in Pirkei Avis says, that's why people say Aun Ares Bovel, or Shir Amalis, because that's from Tilim. So that at least, but the Yevit is counted as if you said uh, words of Torah. But um, it says another thing, though, if you're learning, this applies today also, but you, definitely in the time of Shechon Aruch, much more than today. It says you shouldn't eat food. If you have a safe on the table, you shouldn't have an open safe when you're eating food. Why? Because sometimes there's bookworms in the books. You used to have bookworms in the books. And then you're eating food, and the worm will come out and go into your food, and then you're going to be eating a, a bugs or worms. So that's biblically forbidden to do it. So it says you have to be careful if you have swarm at the table not to bring it around when, when there's food. Or also because of chametz. What? That's what I'm saying. Today, it, it, we don't have that many bookworms. It's, it's a whole different process in, in books. Uh, years ago, they had old, old books. in didn't have books like we have today. You go to the bookstore and buy a book. So they had bookworms. Um, today, even in the big libraries, they process all the books. They fumigate the books that uh, there's no bookworms or bugs and all that. 
So again, it's again, it's not Kabbalah, it's, it's just a simple thing. If you have bookworms, it's going to come into the food. So today, it's the people are not Mahmud. You have to be Mahmud, by the way, because if you use a, a safer during eating and you get crumbs on it, then you have a shower to do Pesach with the crumbs, even though you're Mavatal it, but still, uh, it's, it's an issue. Um, okay, now, when people are eating from a different, let's say there's a communal plate, okay? And there's a bunch of people at the table. So the din is um, the godel, the most respected person in the group, is the one to take first. First, a kain, or no, in Shkhanach it says the Gemara says a godel, whoever the greater person. Sometimes it's aid, sometimes it's wisdom, sometimes it's. And he says, whoever takes first before the godel is called a gargarant. That means a fresher. You know, it's not refined to take before uh, the godel. Now another thing is, what happens if you're sitting by a table and you have, let's say, an elderly gentleman at the head of the household, and he stops eating. He eats and he stops eating. So then the thing is that everybody is supposed to stop eating also. Um, but if there's three people and one stops, two don't have to stop for the one. But one should stop for two people. It's one second. It's interesting, like when the uh, Chassidim used to eat upstairs, when the Rebbe ate upstairs, Yomtev, by the previous Rebbe's, the Friedrich Rebbe's house, until she passed away, Tov Shalom and Aleph. So the Rebbe would sit with the Chassidim, and as it's known, the Rebbe didn't eat too much. So the chassidim wouldn't start eating until the rebbe began eating. And then, when the rebbe finished eating, they stopped eating. So basically, most of the people left hungry. But, um, so the rebbe, I mean, I wasn't there, but they saw, they say the rebbe would, you see that the rebbe would just uh, make as if he's chewing longer just to give the people an, a, a little bit more time to, to eat. Another interesting thing that happened also, and this is a din shkunar, by the way, but uh, if, so the Rebbe did it. It was very simple. Mention it was called decency. That is when the Rebbe would sit. There would be a minion of sitting at the table, okay? and then there were certain bachrim that were there as waiters. So of course the Rebbe got served first, and the chassidim got served accordingly. And then at the end, after everybody was served, the waiters took their plates and sat down by the table. At the end of the table. So the Rebbe never started eating until the waiters sat down and started eating. They were, they were ready to start eating. The Rebbe was the first one to start eating. But the Rebbe, this, 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 by the way, simple decency. You wait for the other people to be served, and when the waiters are done, uh, by the way, there's a very important thing uh, in Sholem bias when, uh, let's say, there's a table full of people, and the wife is serving, let's say, and she serves the husband first, and then she's serving other people. The proper etiquette, by the way, halacha, not the stam, Emily post, but the halacha etiquette would be to wait until the wife comes back and finishes serving and sits down to eat. That's when they should start eating. What? On the Griffiths and Muslim, if you have a bread roll at the table and you have a color at the table, who would you give the other first? So I'll be din in the Gemara. The Mishnah Hari says, Tamad Chacham Mamza Kaidim Lukain Gadal Amaritz. Okay, but the pearl in Poskin, they write that nowadays we don't do that. Today, nowadays, the Kain goes first. But not always at a Machabit of Kain. What? In the cause of the bad guy, people don't like him. They still get Machabit. The question is, are Hashem likes him or not? Ruach means that, yeah, the Kain means Ruach Abriyas Nechem and Ruach Amakim Nechem. I mean, again, if it's a kain that's uh, sinning, a sinner, let's say, then he's not, uh, then, then you don't have to honor him first. Okay. Um, okay, for instance, you're not allowed to do anything despicable with bread. Like if you to hold up, the case in Shkhanach is, you want to hold up a, a tray of food with a piece of bread, and very possibly the, the tray will, the, you know, some of the liquid will fall up onto the bread and the bread will be disgusting. 
There was years ago, they stopped it. The Rabbanim in the city stopped it years ago. They used to, there was a time, it was a fashionable thing at the caterers. They would, the bowls would be a, a, a half a bread, you know, and then they would uh, fill it up with soup, and everybody was supposed to eat the soup and eat the bread. So, of course, nobody ate the bread. So they ended up with, let's see, there were 100 people at the, the function, so there would be 100 pieces, but big, big pieces of bread, bigger than in the Kazayas, it's like a kibetza. They would have these big pieces of bread, and they would be disgusting, and they would end up throwing it out. So the Rabbanu stopped this, but besides Baltashchis, it's making the bread despicable because it gets, you know, you can't eat it afterwards. It's from dirty from the bread and so on. Now to throw bread, we learned when you were in here.